Now, um, this is an interface for Microsoft Project 2016. Um, the interface for projects from Office 365 is a little bit different from what we have here and um, the lower versions 2007 2010 2013 um, is a little also bit different from this one but um for some of us that i sent out link um i sent this one to us so we are going to use um this for the purpose of this training so when i want to start a project the first thing I do is to do some settings. All right, is to do some settings. So please, I just want us to follow us. Follow me, please. Um, this video will be sent to us in a YouTube format that we can always refer to. If there's a process we want to um, practice and we don't know how to go about it, we can always uh, go back to it. I will be as slow as possible um, in order to explain each of those uh, steps. Um, if you have any question, just raise your hand. If I'm too fast, just raise your hand. Then I will need to pause the recording, go back and answer <coughs> those um, questions. All right. So the first thing I do is I go to file. Then on the file, I go to options. If I want to do some settings, I go to file. Then from the file, I go again. Let me go back on that file menu. I go to I go to options. So when I go to options, <coughs> we have um, some in this dialog box. <coughs> we have general display schedule, proofing, save, language, advanced, customize, quick access bar adding and um, so I just change one or two things from there um, just a minute um, just a minute I need to remove this from my Okay, so madam, madam, okay, okay, so you are raising your, your hand. Can you, what, what is the issue? Okay, so. So, just a minute. Unmute yourself. So, yeah. Yes, so, tell me, ma'am. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Go ahead, go yeah, ahead. Okay, so I'm saying that, okay, I'm... I can't tell I, I want to go along with you. I'm, I'm getting to where you are now, just to see the black sheets. I have the software, I have the software installed, but I... You can mm -hmm. hear me? Go ahead. Go, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, what I'm saying is that I have the software. I want to come to the page, the position where you, you are, so that I can follow with you. But I'm not able to get there. That's, that's the point. I'm not... I just know I, I, I have the software here, Project Professional and all that. I don't know how to get to where you are now. Okay, good. All right. Even so if it's I'm a blank to... sheet of it, so that I can follow. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to close um, this just a minute. Um, okay. 
just a minute. Okay, so um, uh, this is a blank. I've just opened the um, office and project on my system, and this is what comes out. All right. Uh, you might not be able to follow me uh, because a lot of things I want to do, but it's important, of course, you are able to open up. Okay, so what I do is what I opened before was an existing project. So if you want to um, open a new project, just click, click blank project. All right. So when you click a blank project, this is um, what uh, you have. All right. So please, um, you might not be able to follow me. Um, you, we, we will need to go back to this recording to do this process because if everybody wants to be following me, I want to wait for anybody, we will not be able to do much today. All right. But it's important you are able to at least get to this, um, to this um, page. All right. So probably uh, I will still need to switch to an existing program for the purpose of what we want to do is now to get ourselves um, accustomed to the, the interface. All right. So like I said, the first thing we do is to go to file. When we are in file, we go to options. So when we are in options, we look at under general. What do we have? Under general, we have um, what is the default view? A Gantt with a timeline. You can leave a Gantt with a timeline as your default uh, view. All right. You can also decide to change it. You can say you want a, a Gantt only, a detailed Gantt, a Gantt chart without a timeline. But for the purpose of this, we can leave it. Your date format. How do you want your date format to be? There are so many formats for dates. All right. You can choose any one um, that you like. May I prefer something like this? All right. Your name. Um, this name usually comes in your summary sheet. Your initials, you can change as you want. Your office team, you can leave it as colorful, dark gray, white, default colorful. You go to your display. Under your display, what do we have? Which type of calendar do you have? Um, what we use presently is a Gregorian calendar. We have uh, other types of calendar, but the one that starts from January to December is Gregorian calendar. We leave it there. All right. Currency option for uh this project here by default is um usd that we have there but if you have 2016 you can change it to nera what do you need to do to change it to nera just um click this arrow the currencies come out just type n when you type n you see ngn ngn if you pick ngn you click it um no i've picked something else N, um, NGN, right? If you select it, um, let's see what is happening. It's a little bit slow. Mm. All right. So NGN is Nigerian Nera. And then you can see that the symbol has changed to Nera. The decimal point is in two, which shows the cover. 
if you want to keep it, you can leave it uh, like that. So we have been able to change the currency to Naira. All right. And we can go to schedule. When we go to schedule, by default, it says week starts on Sunday. But um, work starts on Monday. We can change it. The year starts in January. For some projects that um, you want to uh, display in weeks, and um, the weeks are the weeks for the project, as it were. If a project is starting in 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 April, for instance, and um, for instance, my boss he usually likes seeing the timelines in week one, week two, week three. So if your if yours is like that, that when you start your project is your week one, what you need to do is if you are starting in April, you will need to change this one to April, and the date. The day, if you are starting that project on, on Tuesday, eh, you will need to put this one on Tuesday. So you will be able to start calculating from the first Tuesday or the second, as the case may be, as your in April, as your week. All right. So the start default time. All right. Work starts by 8 o'clock in the morning and um, it ends by um, 5 o'clock in the evening. It is assumed that there is eight hours in a day. It means you have um, a one hour for break. All right. So you can say from eight to 12, that's four hours. 12 to one, that's a break time. Then from um, one to five, that's another four hours, making eight hours per day. Then in that case, by default, you only have five working days, Monday to Friday. That is five days. Eight times five gives you 40 hours per week and then uh, for four weeks in the month we have um, 20 days in a month that is five times four by default but if you want to work more than that if you want to work on saturday you can there's a place we will get to you can add working on saturday to uh, the number of hours and the number of days you can work in the week all right then when you want to schedule new tasks like we have here, um, I always like to schedule um, automatically, all right? By default, automatically. I will explain the difference between automatic schedule and manual schedule. Then, um, this automatically automatically schedule tasks to start on project and start this. Your duration is entered in days. You can enter it in minutes, in hours, in weeks, and months, as the case may be by default is days. Your work is also entered in hours. Then tax type. We have three types of tax types. We have what we call fixed units. We have what we call fixed duration. And we have what we call fixed work. In our second week, we'll be delving into the difference between all these three. So by default, it's fixed and uh, units that you have. All right. Then um, you go down. You can leave every other thing. You can go to proofing. Um, you don't. We don't have much to do here. We leave it as it is. Um, you can go to save. You can go to save. If this network. You can go to save. If we go to save now in our test. Um, is in which format do we save and the files all right um the default is mpp all right the default is mpp if you are saying if somebody else is using a uh, project 2007 you can save in 2007 so that the, if you are using 2016 and they are able to so that they will be able to open those um, mpp files of course, if you are saving, you can also save a project template if you want to be using these settings for a lot of projects that you do. When you save in template, it automatically goes to your template. All right. So um, on that, uh, now save on language. Um, we don't have much. Is English is default on advanced. Um, but uh, what I would just say here is you can change. And this default standard rate, you can change it to Nera. All right. Nera. You can just change it to a Nera per hour. Um, um, when we, we can change it in our resource sheet, if it's not uh, answering us, 
Yeah. All right. So uh, default standard rate per hour over time rate is also per hour. All right. Uh, Maybe other thing here you can leave. And the uh, and value method is calculated based on percentage. We'll talk about that later. Um, so we leave that custom ribbon. We don't need to change anything. Quick bar, we don't need to change anything. Adding, we don't need to change everything. So when we are done with all these settings, we just click OK. When we click OK, so those settings will have been saved. If we look Somebody is asking a question. I thought it's Sunday, the start weekday. Yes, but do we work on Sunday? That is the question. Do we work on Sunday? Because when you say Sunday is the start week, what it means is this software will schedule work on Sunday. Do we work on Sunday? The answer is no. So it's advisable you schedule, you say you start your work on the sat week starts on Saturday so that it does not schedule um work for for sunday all right so it's important we 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 start on monday okay so the next thing i do is i want us to now um see how we can get ourselves familiarized with uh, this um interface but um there's something that is disturbing my menu from showing i need to sort that out before we move on now just a minute please okay i hope this will not be too small okay so all right All right, so we want to get ourselves accustomed with the interface for Microsoft Project 2016. So I go to file, whatever you have here is more or less the same that so that uh, like what you have in any other office uh, soft uh, um, Microsoft Office software is a little bit different. We on that file information about um um the, the this program installed on this system um when you want to create a new um a new a new project that you go to blank to start from scratch or you can import from existing project you can import from excel you can import from sharepoint it's one of the softwares for microsoft office under 365 you have it there you can you can, but because I have my internet on, a lot of templates have come for me. Construction project, commercial uh, projects, software development projects, creating a budget and value. All right, these are templates that you can start with. All right, residential construction, market research, install project server. These are sample projects already that uh, you can leverage on. A lot of them are there, but it's important we know also how to build from scratch ourselves all right save as is there um you can print we we'll look at that later you can share um one thing about sharing is um you the person when you update um the the, the file when you share the link and you update the file the person also that has the link as um, those um, updated information reflecting on their uh, system all right you can export all right you can export as uh, x uh, pdf you can save as a project file and of course you close the account is there to show everything about your project information you can see it's showing me error that something is wrong here all right so that is all about um, the um, um file then the next one is the tax most of the time you are always here under this task most of the time you are always under this uh, tax all right so we have what we have here under this gun are views 
the default view is a Gantt view. This is our Gantt view. Here is what we call timeline view. Here is the Gantt chart. Then we have those um, image and yeah, those um, by the time we begin to populate here, we begin to see some bars. And these are bars um, telling us about the duration of the activities that we are going to have on uh, our timeline. All right. So we have Gantt. We have a network diagram. So I'm going to switch back to a, an already made program so that we'll be able to identify uh, this difference. Let me just pick one program here. Okay, so this is an um, a program that is on already. So when I go to Gantt, eh, when I click network diagram, for instance, So the network is showing me some people they prefer to see their um their project in a gantt form i mean the network diagram form you understand you can see you can see everything is showing the network is there all right so um me i don't like this i don't i never use this your your resource sheet is there this uh, is a resource sheet. We'll be looking at what a resource sheet is and how to populate it. All right. Your resource usage is there. These are views that shows the resources that you have and the work, the work they are supposed to do every time is on this side. All right. Then we have your resource form. Um, this is a resource form. This is a detailed resource form. It shows you... Um, with uh, details of each of the resources, all right, their rates, their you know, Acura's um, standard rate over time rate, and all those stuff like that. All right, so we have um, tax usage, tax form, tax sheet, team planner, timeline, tracking Gantt. Tracking Gantt is what you use when you have started the project. We are still at the planning stage now, as it were. But when you start a project and you want to update, all right, you are supposed to be doing your updating on the tax and the, the tracking grant, all right? You are supposed to do it on your tracking grant, which has a lot of information about your cost, actual start, actual finish, um, and a lot of other um, columns that uh, you have. So I was still on view, all right? So there are so many views that you have here. If you want to create more view also, you can, you want to see more views, you can click here. Those views are here, there are a lot of them. And of course, it depends on what you want to do. All right, we leave that as it is. All right, so those are the views. You know, in, some, in one of our, in our test, what are the views that we have? These are the view, Gantt, Network, Resource Sheet, and stuff like that. All right, so we go to, we have tax now. Under tax, we've talked about the Gantt chart and the views. Of course, you can copy and paste like any Word, Excel, I mean, any Office and tool, right? You can format your text. You can um, cut like any other Office tool. You can copy like any other Office tool. You can edit your font from here, all right? Like other Office tools. Now, what we have here, Please, this is um, one thing that is very, very important for our assignment. Um, I want to talk about these tools that we have here. Is there are tools that we we use from time to time? What we have here, we have an arrow to the left, we have an arrow to the right, and we call them outdent and indent icon. Outdent an indent icon they are what you use to create hierarchy all right you either uh, um outdent to the left or indent to the right to create um hierarchy so what do we mean by hierarchy if you look at this program of work you will see uh, if i collapse then i want to collapse them now I will come to this icon. I will click it. I've collapsed. We have some sub items under it. You can see this is substructure, and under substructure we have 
all these um, sub tags. Now, substructure and superstructure, they are meant to be on the same hierarchy. So something is wrong with what I have. I have collapsed them. If I want to open them, I just click it is open. So it means something is wrong with this substructure. So what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to make it the same with this. I mean, this something is wrong with this superstructure. I want to make it the same line, the same hierarchy. It means it will have the same weight with substructure. I will come here, then I will click to the um, left. So when I click to the left, then we will now check if I collapse this. You can see they are on the same level. That's why I said they are used to create hierarchy. Substructure, this is a, this is a tax. Under it, we have a lot of sub tax. Uh, I'm, I'm closing it now. Then we have superstructure. If I release this thing here, also I click it, we have the activities under superstructure for this project in particular. So how do we, when we do, when I'm done with this exercise, when we create a new project, I will show you how we make use of it. But just for our information, it is to create hierarchy for the red to the light. This is um, a split tax. We use this icon to uh, split. We use this icon to split a tax. Why do we need to split a tax? For instance, if you are doing painting, you, you most times you do so your first coat. Um, the people that want to do a lot of things come inside, they dirty the world. Then you do your um, final coat. In the process of doing that, maybe you are spending five days for painting. You want to spend two days or let's say three days for first coat and primer. Then you want to spend two days. It's only five days that you are spending, but the five days will be splitted. There will be some days in between. Let's take, for instance, I come to bricklaying now. I say 15 days. All right. I want to split these 15 days. I will click this icon, which is split tax, and I will come here. I will split it. Just a minute. Just a minute. Um, let me see the percentage completion for this exercise. Okay, so I click split. I split it. It's not going. Let me see what the problem is. So the reason why this is not going is because this has been saved. This is a base. I think we are on a very different baseline and we cannot edit it. So when we are creating a new one, we will split some of the activities. This one cannot be split again because of um, probably because of this date or a constraint is making that not to be possible. All right. So this one is basically to split a tax. All right. Then we have a link tax. If you want to link two activities together, you will select them. All right. You will select those activities. How do you select them? You click, you hold your, you, 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 you select one item. You can do it in two ways. You will drag and select the other one. Or you select one, you press your shift, then you select another one. All right. Those are the two ways you select that like you select uh, normally. All right. So I want to link these two activities. I click them, I selected them, then I click link. Something is wrong with this old program. Um, it's better I just switch to a new program. This is not answering. Let's go a new. All right. So for instance, we will still do, um, let's say, initiate plan execute and um, monitor and control then closing all right um okay so if you look at 
this tax mode, you can see this icon and you can see these new tasks. They are manually scheduled. There is a difference between manual scheduling and automatic scheduling. Let me take time to explain now. When you schedule your activities manually, um, when you want to make adjustments, it becomes uh, very, very difficult. Okay, somebody is asking a question. In my timeline, I don't have predecessors, please. Okay, if you don't have predecessors, it's very easy. You can bring one out. All right. Um, if you want to bring one out, you just come to add columns. You just type, come to add columns. Just type predecessor. All right. Predecessor will come out. Predecessor is already there. So it, it comes out. You can easily have it here. All right. So add column. You have a lot of um, stuff you can add. Columns you can add. A quite a number of them okay so uh, let's move on um this is not a okay so i was talking about manual scheduling and um automatic scheduling so manual scheduling it just gives you the it does there, there are a lot of um um assumption i mean calculations that is not going to be able to do for you it's important that we just excuse me it's important that we please change this to automatic scheduling all right how do we do that we can do it in so many ways we can come under here we can say pick automatic tax are calculated by microsoft projects eh? or you can come to this place mm, you can change to auto automatic you can see that when i'm changing to auto it's already giving me suggestions on the when the is giving me it's assuming that i'm starting today all right and i'm ending today so please if you when you want to start populating your task name ensure you do all these settings there are some settings that will scatter your program and will be very difficult to do when you don't do all those things at the beginning okay you need to do those things at the beginning you can see something that is happening here my hand mistakenly changed this duration to zero days and automatically it has changed it to my zone so I said, in our, I mean, in our text, it was asked, how do you make um, an activity a milestone? All right. How do you make an activity a milestone? Is by changing the duration to zero, to zero days. What does that mean? It means that um, a, a, a milestone basically is a stage. All right. A milestone is a stage um, in your project where something is accomplished. So it's not usually a, 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 an activity as it were. Okay. So when you want to build and you've gotten your foundation sorted out at the stage where everything is complete, that is a milestone. That's why you just, you just, um, so usually when you have a phase, at, at the end of that phase, you just say, for instance, you can say foundation complete. Then you put the duration as zero. So that is a milestone. All right. So I was trying to explain some stuff. Let's assume um, this duration for initiation is, let's say it's five days. We use like 10 days to plan, just an assumption. Um, execute, here we are executing for 15 days. Um, let me see. I want to check if people are asking me questions. There's no question. If you have any question, just let me know. If I'm too fast, just let me know. All right, so that I can easily go back and um, and answer those um, questions. Okay. Um, okay. So let's move. All right. So let's assume. 
let's assume um just a minute some messages are coming in okay let's assume that um i'm removing this this is um execute i'm deleting this okay monitoring and control something that happens um during the process where we have closing let's say we use two days to close all right okay so i was trying to explain these icons let's say this is our project project plan all right so i want to use this simple program to explain what these icons how to use this icon so this is a project plan right i can bold in it Control b to bold it the first thing i do the procedure for creating a program i mean a, a schedule is number one you populate the task that are meant to be done now if you have a green project a new project is a green project sometimes we call it a green field um and you don't even know what it's all about you don't know the activities that are there i used to say one if you want to do a project you should know the steps the activities you should know the sequence of those activities the ones that can happen and occur at the same time the one that has to finish before another one starts the chronological way the steps the activities will take place all right i also you, you need to know that i also used to say that if you don't know you need to ask but um, a, there is another way that I've discovered in the last couple of weeks and months is um, using artificial intelligence, leveraging on artificial intelligence to now help you even to plan projects that you don't know anything about. We are going to be leveraging on artificial intelligence and to see how we can plan projects that we don't even know anything about. But it is important that at the end of the day, before you plan a project, you should know about the steps that are involved. You should not miss anything out. You should know the ones that will be happening together, the ones that can wait before another one stops. Some of these things you learn by experience. You don't, um, you, it's the best way to learn it is by experience, right? All right. Um, just a minute. Somebody is sending me a message now. Just a minute, please. Okay, sorry for that. Okay, so um, so we want to learn these tools, how they work. Hmm? So the first thing is, um, I want to create a hierarchy. I want to make this one the main tax and the main project. And I want to make these activities um, sub tax. So what do I do? I need to highlight all of them. All right, I light all of them. Just drag your cursor, all right, on all of them. I will now indent to the right. When I do that, I have, it's already telling me by the virtue of the fact that I, I, it's already telling me that it's going to take 15 days, but that is not correct as it were because the assumption is still that everything is going to start on the same day, which is today. But it has picked the the, the length, longest task, all right, to 
uh, give me the final duration. So this is the final duration you are already having here. All right, it's already calculated the time, the, the, the day that I'm going to start, which is today. And it has calculated that um, I'm going to finish by this day. All right. And the, if the assumption also is that I am even going to, if you look, I am going to spend 15 days, but that is not correct. So the next thing I want to do is I want to link these activities then I'm going to create the relationship. That's where experience comes in. This, you cannot do. Um, you can only do this by experience because you need to know how those projects, how those items relate. Initiation must be complete before you plan, I mean, before you go to planning. Under initiation, that's where you, you develop project charter and you you identify your stakeholders as it were so it means this one has to be complete before this one starts so what do i do i click these two items there are so many ways you can do this thing but the fastest way is i click these two items i come here i say link all right so what has it done it has made this one to finish on a friday and another one to start on a Monday. What is the assumption? The assumption is that you are working five days in a week, Monday to Friday, five days. You are not working on Saturday, you are not working on Sunday. So if you are now working on Saturday, we will get there now in the Jiffy. We will now look at how we can make Saturday a working day, right? You can know how to make Saturday a working day. We will learn about that. But let's see how we can learn these two first. Okay. So let's move on. Um, so when you, you are supposed to finish planning before you go to execution, right? You are supposed to finish planning before you go to execution. So I want to link it also. I will I like the two. I will come here. I will link. You can see that the duration of my project is getting very long. All right. It's getting very, very long. Okay. It's calculated it's already 30 days by virtue of these links. Okay. So now we need to understand that we are already executing. Monitoring and control, um, as it were, is also supposed to be 15 days because the the, you, you do monitoring and control when you are implementing okay so this is meant to this is the typical example of what we call a start uh, to start a, um, relationship so i want to explain briefly to us the four types of relationship we have when it comes to linking When it comes to li linking activities together, what are the types of relationships we have to establish that this link that is joined these two activities, just double click it, put your cursor on it and double click. When it double clicks, it brings out the types of dependencies. That is the relationship between the two activities, basically. I said we have four types. Finish to start, start to start, uh, finish to finish, and start to finish. What does it mean? This first one means an activity has to finish before another one starts. This second one means the two of them have to start at the same time. This one means the two activities have to finish at the same time. This one means one has to start before the other one can finish. So those are the four types of relationship that we have. Then on this side, we have this lag. We have positive lagging and we have lead and we have lag. That's what we call it, positive and negative. All right, I will explain how it's been done. When we want to compress 
the program. Okay, so I want to now, I, I want to click, I want to do an establishment. This thing, eh, they have to start at the same time. I can first of all link them. Now, the default is, is finish to start. But I don't want finish to start. I want them to start to start. Even start to start or finish to finish. If I click any one of these, it will work now because it's the same duration. All right. So you can see because in project management, monitoring and control. And as we immediately you start your execution, monitoring and control takes place. They take place at the same time. All right. So it's only when you finish this one that you can now close the project, right? So I can also highlight the two of them and um, I will link them. That's how to use this. So you can see. Um, so automatically at the end of the day, the total duration of my project has now come to 32 days. What if I've been given the responsibility, I mean, the instruction, I have a constraint that I'm only supposed to spend 25 days for this project. 25 days is about a month or there about if you are working on Saturday. What is the constraint is, okay, guys, you're going to get this job done within a month. What do I do? Then I will now need to now see what we call um, crashing. All right. I now need to see how I can compress some of these durations that I will be able to achieve my project in 25 days. So my execution, uh, my initiation, for instance, if I if I reduce my, um, my initiation, I'm going to spend four days, all right? I'm gaining some days there. Planning, oh, I got no 10 days for planning. I'm going to reduce it to eight, all right? I'm gaining some days. Uh, as execution, I don't have the luxury of time. I have to come down um, 13 days. All right, 13 days is still not too much. This is just um, an example as it were. All right. So now, when you reduce the duration of a tax, what does it mean? A tax is a tax. In terms of scope, the tax is not going to change. When you reduce the duration, what happens? You need to put in more resources to still be able to achieve that particular task. When you reduce the duration, you put in enough resources, the manpower, you understand, the material, at times the equipment that you want to use, all right? You should be able to augment the, the scope of that work is not going to change. It's just the resources that you need to achieve it. That is what um, you need to work on. All right. So that is that about uh, linking. So um, the process of um, linking is also the opposite of unlinking. If I select this start to start now and I click this, it will unlink. All right. All right. I click it. So I want to explain how, when do we split tax? For instance, during the uh, process of uh, initiation now, maybe there's going to be a break within that process. It, it's still four days, so, but I want to split it. You can see now, um, this splitting is still not going. Um, just a minute. Okay, it has gone. So you can still see that it's still four days, but it's going to now happen over a five-day period. Even though it's only four days that you are going to... So you can see the dates, 13, 14, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. It's not going to happen over a five-day period, but it's only on a four-day time. There's going to be a break here. There are instances where you have... You, you, when you want to do something, they don't follow each other every day. That's the essence of um, this um uh, split tax. I've been able to explain that. Now, very, very important. Um, more often than not, I've seen programs of work and um, people just prepare it at the beginning of a project and that is all. 
is not meant to be like that okay so it's a working document all right what the procedure is at the beginning of a project you have your time planning when it's approved when you want to start that project you save it as a baseline and you are supposed to be updating it every now and then as each activities is being is being achieved you will do what you will update them if there's any if there's any uh, column you don't need uh, you can move it away all right you can even hide it hide the column so there's something i need now i want to i want to add a new column for comp uh, percentage completion that's very key for me all this predecessor, so i don't need it all this resource now i don't need it you just when you right click a column you don't need you can click hide column if you want to add a new column you can click insert also if you want to add a new column so that you right click click insert or you come here and you have those lists we have a number of those columns and uh, for the purpose of what we are doing at this elementary stage for today we will not be can't be going to all this color but there's so much you can do with all this common uh, column depending on the level of detail of um your project what do we mean by level of detail how how how, how deep you want to do you want to go in terms um please indicate percentage plant okay percentage plant please indicate percentage plan let's see we don't have percentage plan on our column it's only percentage complete that we have the percentage complete not planned yeah maybe it's the same thing that you're talking about that which which i have done the percentage complete all right so percentage complete is there okay so as many columns that you want um you want to actual cost finish cost actual start work at times if you don't even know um the columns that are relevant you can come here and they are pre there, there, there are some templates tracking gant is here when you click tracking gant it shows you relevant columns it brings it out that are that are necessary for um for we have not saved as baseline all right so we will still go into that all right so um we are here so like i was talking about tracking as your project is going on you are supposed to be doing what you are supposed to be tracking it tracking is an ongoing concern during the course of the project is when you input those relevant um um is when you input those relevant um relevant um updates that you'll be able to do reports when you run your reports your report will be able to give you um, information that is correct. But if you don't input the day initiation starts, for instance, you are, there's supposed to be a column here where we call actual actual start. Hmm? Actual start, actual finish. All right? Actual start, actual finish. This is planning. This is the, the planned start date. Okay? But the day you start it itself, you are supposed to enter those dates here. Yeah. What is it going to do for you? It's going to help you when you are running reports, you are doing comparison, like baseline um, comparison. You will be able to compare what we have planned against what um, we are actually doing. All right. Um, so... So tracking is very important. How do you track? How do you how do you update? Rather, if you want to update, there are so many ways you can do it. You can do it manually. You can do it manually. You can say twenty percent, for instance. All right. You can see when I added twenty percent here, the total progress of my project is already two percent. If I have been able to do twenty percent of the um. So at the, uh, the background, um, weights have been assigned to these activities and some calculations are going on by virtue of this. The weight is basically this duration. That is the weight. Two things that determine the weight of an activity are the duration. For instance, if I'm able to, these 12 days now, if I'm able to achieve 20% in these 12 days, 
you will see that I'm going to leap further. I've been able to achieve nine percent of my total projects. So when they ask you what's the start, what's the status of your project, what is the progress, what do we say? Okay, percentage plan is not percentage completed. Actual percentage plan is not percentage completed. Okay, thank you very much for that information. All right, so um. So you can see that if I'm able to achieve 20% of an activity that has 12 days, I have been able to achieve 9% of my projects. All right. If I achieve, for instance, another 20% of this plan date, I'm only have gone up. So it does the calculation for us at uh, the background as it were all right so we are still at the interface um so you can also use these icons even though um they have um a predetermined um, percentage but i prefer to just enter it um i prefer to enter it manually uh, at times you might have you have completed your job 10 percent 20 30 as it were not what is here all right so we move on so mark on track so when an activity is on track you can use this one to mark it that is on track all right then when this one you use it so that you, you, you move the selected task so that their dates are determined by any tax dependency they have all right, this is like a kind of um, pre-programming as it were for an activity that you, when the, the, the software needs to take a decision, please respect those links and move it. So if you want to inactivate a, a, a tax, you can inactivate it here. All right. So it's telling me that an activity that is in progress, I'm sorry, you cannot inactivate it. Something that I've not started. Uh, it's only something that I've not started that you can inactivate but this one that i started now um i will inactivate it all right okay so um we've talked about manual schedule automatic schedule you can inspect um your activity uh, to show warnings to show suggestions inspect as there's any constraint that is on it just you can use that one you can move your tax by a day forward to you are move it um to backward you can reschedule this where resources are available you can do that then the mode we talked about this manual and automatic then we have the summary here if you click it the summary comes out you are creating a new summary all right you want to create a milestone all right you just click this a milestone comes so this milestone can just be say project for instance project Project plan complete can be a milestone and automatically you can see it has given you zero, zero day. A milestone is a zero day. All right. So if you want a, an information about a tax, when you click here, it gives you this dialog box that shows um, the information about that um, particular tax you can see the predecessors if there is any you can see the resources if there's any you can see advanced and constraints like um, as soon as possible uh, fixed unit we talked about this earlier we have different types of units um we have fixed units we have fixed duration and we have a uh, fixed work when you want to do a job there are three things that are involved all right, the duration is there, the quantity of the work that you want to do is there, and the unit that you want to do is there. If you fix one, eh, then you are able to, if, 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 you, if you make one to be fixed, then when you make a change in the second one, the third one will change, the other one will be fixed. So those three, there are three constraints, there are tax type, there are some, there are some activities, duration must not change, all right? The unit of work must not change all other things if you change the duration the other ones can change so there are three constraints that if you lock one if you change one the third one will change okay so um we have you can add notes to each of those tags 
and custom feeds. Um, you can do some kind of customization for all those activities there. All right. So information is that you can add notes. You can add. You can come out with the detail if you want the detail about this one is the detail about this task, uh, the constraint type, the type of task. It has the code already assigned. Then the, um, the date, the particular date. This one is not applicable because we have not we have not even started it. I don't know whether the, it has any percentage completion. So is it current? Is it a baseline? Is it actual? You can make those changes on um, a particular tax from this particular place. Then you can also add some stuff to the timeline. You can scroll to the uh, tax there. So this is under tax. We go to resource. Uh, under resource, what are resource? We have three types of resource as far as a uh, Microsoft project is all about. We have three types of um, of um, of resource. There is a uh, what we call work resource. There is what we call um, uh, material resource. Then there is what we call cost resource. What am work resource? Work resource are what they are basically personnel and material work resource are basically personnel listen to this i repeat in microsoft project work resource are what um no work resource are personnel and equipment please work resource are personnel and equipment and uh, material resource are the consumables if you are a civil engineer what are your consumables on site it has to do with your cement your sand your water your planks and other stuffs um then the cost resource are some costs that are not uh, directly related to those items, but they cut across things like transportation, fueling, and stuff, admin, admin costs, and stuff like that. So under resource and uh, this resource menu, and what we do there is to assign, we can assign resources from here, okay, um, to a tax from here, or we go to the resource sheets under here. We're we'll going there shortly. Um, just a minute. We can go to resource sheet under here to populate the resources that we have for the project. We will look at that in the GF. All right. So, um, just a minute. So I'm back to the Gantt. Your default view is the Gantt. Please, at times you go to resource and you don't see anything again. Just come back to this Gantt and you come to Gantt chart. Whatever you have done comes back. All right, so we are on, on resource. Under resource, usually what I do is I don't come here. I first of all go to that resource sheet to populate my uh, resources for the project. We do this when you want to uh, had some financials all right to your uh, project if it's just timeline and duration that you want to get involved with you don't want to have add costs you might not need to go into that detail i talked about a uh, level of detail earlier so if you want to add the cost elements resource management to your planning you will need to come here very often all right to assign you look at your resource pool share resource pool when you you use this when you um have managed so many projects and you have resources you want to you want to share among the projects all right so you can level resource what do we mean by leveling resource it means when some resources are over allocated you when you level them you reallocate them if they are able to perform the other activities all right so we go to reports Report under report we have um, different types of um, reports that we can get. Let me go to um, let me open a new program so that um, we will be able to appreciate this reporting. Okay, so we are under report, right? So these are we are our dashboards now. Under reports, you can compare projects that is when you want to you have so many projects that you are doing 
Here you can compare projects. Eh? Compare the current project to the previous version. You understand? You can click open here now and click when you have you can save. Um, this is another way of um of um, comparing baselines. When you have saved the project in one baseline, you save it in another name. If the activities are the same thing, you can come here, pick the other one, then you can compare that those two reports all right so what are our dashboards on our dashboards um basically uh, we have reports on burn down we have reports on cost overview reports on project overview reports on oncoming tax work well, let me say project overview for instance let's see what we have so this is my pro this is my report at a glance it's telling me that my project is 27 percent completed uh, is there any milestone that is due there's no milestone that is due. Are there activities that are late? Some activities are late. All right. It's giving me a graph. All these things you can modify. You can modify them. You can take this to Excel. You can modify them like you want. If you are very good in Excel, these are Excel graphs. You from here, you export them to Excel, you modify, then you come back. It's already giving me Excel format there. So there's a lot you can do if you will only get a good report if you that will be a reflection of the, your project a true reflection of your project if you have um if you have done the needful what is the needful you update the project when you are supposed to do them all right um so these are some of the reports you can get let's go back to our reports um Let's go to upcoming tax if we have any. Um, this project is an whole two project, so it's not giving me the necessary um, reports that I want. All right, and uh, work overview it gives you work overview and uh, gives you your um, baseline cumulative remaining work cumulative work. So depending on the level of the detail, like I mentioned, depending on what report you want, this um, can give you reports of uh, whatever and you can always modify any of them take it to excel you modify them all right to suit your purpose you can even modify this your this your report you can even draw on it you can make comment on it you can put pictures there you can insert your picture your site uh, picture all right you can insert your um let me see if i can get anything from here just a minute. Um, I don't know if I have any site project here. So you can see that um, I've even so when you are writing your report, for instance, you can import your your site and um, your site pictures all right and bring it here there's so much it's editable those reports are editable i'm going to i can give us some reports that i was able to, to generate um, in powerpoint by virtue of manipulating what we have here and it's very nice so talking about uh, reports so we have report a lot of reports are available on that dashboard under under costs cash flow reports and value report, cost overflow report, in progress activity, critical tax reports, late tax report, milestone report, sleeping tax, and so much. You can even, you can even, you can even um, export this report to Excel. All right, visual reports. This one takes a lot of time. You can see cost baseline report, baseline work report. So there's so much reports you can get but those reports will be correct like i said only if you have tracked your program of work and you have inputted those data as at when did you, when did you start a particular activity when do you hand it okay so those are the reports then you can easily save your report. Um, just a minute. Let's say project overview, for instance. You just go to file, 
you can go to print you can save it in pdf you can even modify it you can do page setup from there you can add header you can add column you can add footer and other stuff you can do that you just when you click print it saves for you in pdf that you can um attach um just a minute so so that is under reports okay then under projects let me go i will first of all go to task that's how to go back go to tax go to gantt view so that's where we are back all right please don't forget that at times the thing can be can get um um you can miss it up you don't even know where you are going again anytime you don't know where you are going you can just come to this tax and come here and click Gantt chart you will be back on this uh, page we've looked at uh, resource we've looked at report we've looked at we want to go to project so what are projects so for instance the first thing here now if i have another project hmm, i can insert it here when i come to sub project hmm? um let me see download So this is a, an assignment from a student. I have bought that project here. Let's assume it's another project. When it comes, it comes um, with just one line. But when I click here and everything comes down, you can see. So I have access to all those projects. Now, on that, this one, you can see that. So sub project, you can bring a project as they are updating that project, as this, this project is being updated from the system, everything comes here. It's also being updated here accordingly. All right, so you can do that. And on that store and adding, you can get some apps, browse office, and there are some plugins that you can get to add to your project. A lot of apps I have there, a lot of softwares I have there. Then the project information tells you everything about the project um you have the start date we have start date we have current date we have status date excuse me your start date is the date that this project is going to start all right that is which project has been done in 2021 your current date is the date of that very day you opened it and your status date, you can see this status date is giving you something else. When you want to run a report of what happened sometimes ago, before you run that report, you come here and you click your status date. So this is the difference between status dates and current dates. All right. So we have talked about, we have calendar here. There are different types of calendar standard as 12, uh, 8 hours a day, uh, 24 hours, night shift and stuff like that. All right. Then we have schedule from hmm? schedule from project start dates. Uh, we can leave that there. Um, custom feed. These are um, some logics that you create and some um, you create for like kind of um, some programming as it were. We will not uh, disturb ourselves with that. And uh, links between projects. You can link projects. WPS. That's work breakdown schedule. You can define codes. Codes are there, but they are being hidden. You can work on them. Change working time. Uh, we will go into that. Those are the about two major three, two major three things that we we look about. We look at now. And I'm still leaving this. I will go back to it. I will not forget. Let me write it down. Change working time. Working time. All right. So calculate project. When you have updated your project, you have entered everything. You need to do what when you click calculate. So it does all those analysis at the background. You might not see anything, but those analysis have been done in the background. All right. So um set baseline. So basically, during the planning stage, it's expected that a program of work will be prepared. When it is approved, before the work starts, 
it is expected that you come to this place under project, you will save. Set baseline. What do you do? You click it. Eh? You now click set baseline. All right. So some baselines are already been set on this um, program. That was in 2021. I can now set another baseline. If you look at this and from our test, there are maximum of 11 baselines you can set in a project. There are maximum of 11 baselines you can set in a project. Maximum of 11 baselines you can set. You count it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So what are baselines? So if you want to save as a baseline, I've saved baseline 2 already now. I can just come to baseline 3 and I click save. So what does it do? What does this baseline do? A baseline is a snapshot of your schedule that includes information about tasks, resources, and assignments. Okay? So what it does is, it's like you take a picture and that picture takes everything into consideration. If you now make a modification in terms of you change the duration, you add another task, it will not be captured in that baseline. Until you now go and save up another baseline, that is when those additional information will be captured. You can also move your project and based on the status date, you can update your project, you can check spelling. Then view, um, we've talked about this under view, uh, network diagram, calendar, view, stamp planner, all these ones. You can sort, you can highlight, you can highlight completed tasks, you can highlight critical tasks, you can highlight late tasks, okay? You can highlight so many things that can be highlighted, all right? So if you are just, you want to run a summary on your project, say, oh, what are the critical activities? What are the activities that are clear? What are the activities that are incomplete? You can highlight them. You can even filter them also. You can filter all these activities out. You can filter them. Um, your time scale is up here. If you click your time scale, your time scale, how do you, this is your time scale. How do you want to see it? Just a minute. Your time scale, let me see. Your time scale is not even showing. The time scale is not even showing because I'm in a tracking view, yeah? Um, so your ta time scale is now in days, all right? Um, it can be in weeks. You can see this one has turned to weeks now. All right, this one has turned to weeks. Uh, some at times it can be in months. These are turned to most months. Some people, depending on how you are printing your project. Um, so this is your time scale. You can correct it from here. All right, so you can zoom in, zoom out, and that project selected project. You can add your timeline. This is the timeline. You can add your detail at the bottom. This is the, if you choose. A particular activity, um, the detail for that activity will come out. Okay. All right. So, um, detail. Yes. So, um, so that is under view. Then we go to format. So, like any any Excel or any office project, you can you can do a lot of formatting on your program of work to make it very nice okay so um you can format your grid you click grid here your bars you want to make it uh, tick you want to make it color black all right you can see a lot of uh, grid so this one is basically formatting you can format your rows you can format your columns Can see they are being formatted. Um, I will still I will send us a video to talk about this formatting more. So um, vertical ties you can format it. Um, so a lot of things you can do here. You can format your layout, your text ties, your layout. You can insert columns. You can format your bars. All these bars you can change the color as you want. 
eh? your bar and your bar styles. You can change the color from beginning to the end. Um, you can change the shape at the beginning. You can change the shape at the end. But if you want to do this, what you do is you do it at the beginning. If you don't like this shape, what I have done now is only affected this particular one. If you don't do it at the beginning, you will have problem there. All right. So uh, you can I'll format critical tags. You can format Slack. You can format late tags. All right. There are so many things that can be your tax part, your baseline. You can format your baseline, your slippage, everything. Outline your number. You can add numbers to your tax. Um, your project summary. Do you want it to show or not? Um, your summary tax. Do you want it to show or not? You can draw there. Okay. Now, two things I want us to do. And I want to go back to that uh, project that I created. The simple one that we were doing. Okay. No, not this one. Um, just a minute. Okay, so we were here. Now, if you look at this program that we did, um, if you look critically at Saturday and Sunday, I want to make Saturday a working day. I want to make Saturday a working day. Just listen to this. We are going to to learn how to make Saturday a working day. In most part of the work on Saturdays we work, especially if you are in the construction industry. So what do you do? You come here. You come to anywhere under this timeline. You will right click. If you come here, it will not come out. If you come in inside this bar area, it will not come out. You will come up. Then you will right click. You will now click change working time. What do we want to do? We want to make Saturday is work, a working day. By virtue of um, the default setting for the default setting for Microsoft Project, Saturday is not a working day. All right. So I will click, like I said, you come to this timeline, you right click, you click change working time. So when you click change working time, you Pick any Saturday. I can pick today is 11th. I can pick 18. I can pick 25. You pick 18. You double click 18. No, you okay. When you have picked 18, you will come to work week. Let me repeat the process again. Please listen to this. Come anywhere here. Right click. Click change working time. Pick any Saturday, come to work week. This default, double click default. You will now pick Saturday. When you pick Saturday, you will now click on set this. To these specific working times you will now put time here how many hours so i zoom there's a format i say see this format for this time am i press tab i click here i type 12 0 pm i assume if we are working a full day on that saturday if you are not working a full day, we can leave it like this. It means if you just take four hours, that's half day. If you are working full days, let's say we are back by one o'clock, um, one o'clock p.m. Then we want to close by five. Five. Make sure you type the time in this format. If not, it will not accept it. When you do that, you click OK. Immediately you click OK, you will see that 
every Saturday has now become a working day. This Sunday that is highlighted, 5 12 19 26, they are not working this. Let's click OK and see what we have. We click OK. So we have clicked OK now. You can see that if you look at this place very well, Saturday is now a working day. It's Sunday that is not a working day. All right. So that is um, that about um, changing working time. So I want to tell us that process. The process is right click, pick working time, pick any day. If I, let's assume I want to make Sunday a working day, also I click Sunday. All right. I click work week. I double click this default. Then Sunday is there. I select it. And I followed, I write that time, I click OK, and it happens. Now, what if I want to add public holiday? How do I do it? For instance, if I want to make a December 25 eh, a public holiday, I click exceptions. I don't put anything here, it will not answer me. If I want to put anything here, it will not answer me. You just go to this date. You click start, pick a date. December 25, which happens to be a Monday. Very good. Then you will now click this on named. It will now answer me now. Just click it only once. You can say Xmas holiday. So what it does is this date, immediately I click OK. No work will be slated for that day. All right. It's somewhere um around here yeah. even though we have not gotten we didn't schedule anything to up to that date but if there's anything that is scheduled on, on this date it will skip it so any public holiday or when you are going for a vacation you are on holiday you pick a date during the week yeah you are not going to be at work and you don't want a job to be scheduled on that day you have picked that day just come here come and select that day all right 21st okay eh? on leave on leave okay you click okay so that particular day no activity will be scheduled there so that's how to change a saturday to a working day all right so one problem that students usually face is how to print is how to is how to print so when you want to print I usually advise you can print directly to your system, to your print uh, printer, or you can save in PDF first. For the purpose of this assignment, you will be saving in PDF, so you need to learn. So what do we do? We will click File. We will click Print. Then the thing comes out. Please, I usually tell people that please make sure your um, your PDF printing saving is not more than one week and one, one 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 page. You can select your paper on A3. Um you can this is just five activities, so it is not it's a very small this thing. So you can do the manipulation here. All right. Um page. Usually you can say fit if it's going more than one page. When you click fit, it comes out. When you say okay, you will look at it whether everything is okay or not. So these dates also you can see these dates. You can use this date also to let's say this thing is now printing the fourteenth uh, of uh, December. I say I want to see this side up to twenty five, for instance. If I click twenty five, you can see the difference. It, it is showing me up to this date. So you, please, the rule is. Wherever your tax is, your bar has to be close to it. If you have, like, there are some programs in big projects, you will have items up to a thousand. But of course, if you learn the basics, the basics is very important. If it's 1,000 or 500 or 1,500, if you know the basics, it will help you. We are still at the elementary stage. What we are doing is elementary, and um, it's important we get the basics. So that when you really have some serious program of work to do, you will still know how to 
navigate about it so when you just click print you can always uh, save um save your your stops all right so you just click save then the pdf will be saved you can always uh, you can always uh, check it okay so this is exactly a minute to one um i want to check whether i've been able to do justice to what i'm supposed to cover today um just a minute okay um i think is um time for questions now but before um, we ask questions, there is something I want to to let us. I want to just show us. Um, um so i think i can um i want to our meeting is supposed to be supposed to be held by 1 15. so before i start uh, entertaining questions i don't want us to be left out i think it's important i just extend it for some minutes but if you have questions um, you can let me know so that um i will begin to answer them but i want to change this edit i hope i'm able to edit this now uh, not able okay. okay so let's have questions our the timing i'm not even able to edit this um time so we have just about um 13 minutes to the end of this training so please let me have your questions now uh, for those that do not have a microsoft project installed on their system please let's um, see after the service as it were um let us do break after every one hour. That is your suggestion. I've tried to do some. We've had like two breaks today. Um, but if we do break every one hour, I understand it's just three hours. If we do break every okay, that is noted. It's always good to, to have breaks. It's always good to have breaks. Um anyway, um okay, your point is uh, noted. So I've downloaded a lot of stuffs. I know it's like it's too much and that's why we are limiting it to three hours and we need to lay our hands on on um on the assignments so that those questions i know those questions will still come all right and those questions will still come so um there's something i really want to tell us so i'm sharing a so for some of us, we are not um, we are not um, we are not civil engineers, and the assignment I want to give us is related to that. So I'm going to add when we I give us our assignment, I'm going to add um, this screen that I'm going to to I'm sharing now to those assignments. So this is a prefilled um, is a prefilled um max showing the 49 processes for um project uh, management so for those guys that are not civil engineers that will be doing the assignments you will use this one as your tax so let me quickly tell us the procedure for doing this our the program of the first thing is you itemize your tax the second thing is what you will put your duration that is the second thing 
itemize your tax, write it, and ensure that all these ones are in automatic. They are in automatic. I don't have time to do that. The next thing is what you put your duration. All right, your your test we we show us. This is just an assumption, eh? Uh, just an assumption. You put your duration. Then the next thing is what you will when you have done your tax, when you have um, put your duration, then you will link them. What I do most time, or when you done that, you indent them. So indent, for instance, you will click these two. If you click like this, this is already a sub main tax and sub tax. You will indent. Okay, that is the next thing. You will indent. Okay, you will indent. So after indenting, what is the next thing you do? You will link them. Get your tax, put duration, indent, then you will link them. I've told us the reason why we need to link them. You will link them, you will highlight. You can either highlight this, highlight this, anyone. When you highlight, you will link them, all right? You link them. You link them. You link them. So this linking is is with an assumption that one will start before another one finish. That is not the case in act in the actual way. Now, what have I done? I have not put the summary of what is this project. This project is what. This project is let's say ma project management plan. All right. That is this project. Let's assume this project is a project management plan. All right. So I need to make this one a project. How do I do that? I will now need to indent all these things. Okay? Let me now compress it so that you will see. Hmm? So this one is the same hierarchy with PMP. So they can they are not in the same level. I will just shift it in. I will close it. I will link it. So when I do this. And this is the last one. I will indent it. I will close it. So this one can easily give me the final duration. So you can see this. This is a project. All right. I can now. I'm expanding, collapsing them. I'm collapsing them. All right. So. I'm, I've not taken time to put this duration. I'm just rushing up because of our time. Okay. So, basically, if I want to print this now. Now, usually when you have this, this duration, uh, you get the duration for a tax based on experience. What is the material you need? What is the material you have available? That will determine the number of this for your project in the real sense of it. All right. But for the sake of this, um for the sake of this of this uh, training or this assignment a, a particular um duration for the assignment the project will be given you need to work around it to suit it but in natural sense these are done all right um based on reality what is required you look at your resource it comes by experience like i talked about so you will now if the duration is more than what is on that program what you now do is by you will now need to come to this place one by one do i need to lag this is lagging when i lag it means this activity just a minute when i come here i click on this relationship i'm saying develop project plan plan scope management can i i don't this Relationship has been done that one has to finish before another one starts. But that is not the case. So this is where I lead or I lag. Hmm? There are two ways. Eh? I can as well say that this activity 
I need to I need to finish then wait for if you need there are some activities you need to finish and wait for some days it will be positive hmm? it's pushing it forward but if I say I can start eh so some days to the back I can do that so so I've taught us the relationships we need to make use of this relationship to create the lags all right the lags and the and uh, the lags for us to be able to establish the total duration all right so um i want questions do we have, have any questions please let us break after one hour uh, okay i've attended to that i've attended to that so um so we are almost done questions i need questions i know i've downloaded a lot um questions 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 if you don't have questions my question will come later in the day all the videos that we have made today will be on our google i mean google classroom class the assignment will be uploaded on google let's try and lay our hands on i'm very sure for the new joinees and those who are just learning this for the first time they will have one or two questions to ask when you are laying your hands on this so from there um software training is not about speaking grammar it's about laying your hands on the tool and practicing it okay we need to lay our hands on the tool and then we need to practice we need to practice it we need to practice it any question please our time stops in four minutes how do we no lag time if not an engineer how do we know lag time okay i will try and explain this again so what i am saying is this thing comes by experience for you to plan a project you need to understand this is just you need to understand the tasks that are in that project that one software is not going to teach you sir the tags that are in a project, you need to understand it. You need to also understand the relationship. This comes only by experience. No software is going to... Of course, artificial intelligence can help you. We will learn about that later. Artificial intelligence can come to play and help you, yes. That's one of the advantages of artificial intelligence. But if you don't have the head of artificial intelligence, you need to know. I want to do a bungalow, for instance. I want to develop a software, for instance. You need to know the steps. You need to know the activities that can happen sequentially. Activities can happen that one has to be completed before another one finish. Um, you need to learn that by experience. Then artificial intelligence can also assist in, in doing that. Any other question? Any other question, please? Nobody is talking, oh. I have just two minutes. Which material resource required to accomplish projects? Again, comes with experience. Okay, so let's, let's take a, a building project for instance. Eh? You need a material, you need um, you need the uh, sand, you need cement. How to estimate those things? Engineers does that. Okay, uh, if we don't use, um, you need to by virtue of you need to be able to calculate. I need ten blocks. I need fifteen blocks. I need hundred blocks. All right, you need to be able to calculate all those ones. You need to be able to calculate. That's where the experience comes into play. Uh, that's where the experience comes into play. If you want to plan, if you want to do wedding, let's even leave building. You want to do wedding. Uh, the project planner, if you tell the project planner that you are expecting 300 people, 
right? He will plan how to the number of rice, the number of meat to buy to be able to to satisfy 300 people. That comes with experience. So that is basically what it's all about. So your your activities for a project and the sequence is comes by experience. Even there is a limitation to what uh, artificial intelligence can help you to do. It comes with experience. You need to know. And if you don't know, what you do is that you ask people that have done that kind of project before to guide you on which project, oh, what do I need to achieve this? The people that we do the project, we can go to them. For instance, in a building, for instance, your um, cost control. How is this managed in the overall concept of um, project management? Uh, one of the ways you do cost control is doing implementation is you do what we call, um, you do variance analysis. I understand. Um, you, your, your, your reports, when you run your reports, when your project is going on, you, you you do cost analysis you 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 see where you are you are there are some terms that um probably i will give us there are some cost terms in terms of um when you do and value analysis and and value analysis is one of the tools that we use in project management to control costs if and value analysis is one of the tools that we use in um in uh, project management to control costs you don't and what it does again is it gives a projection if you say you are going to use um 100 naira to do a cost to, to to perform a tax you are and you are going to spend five days you have spent three days and you have you have you have spent okay you have spent three days and you have you have spent 80 naira it means that something is not going on. So what it does also is it gives a projection. If you spend like this, by the time you finish this project, you will go to, into cost of balance. So and value analysis, this software can do that. If you are taking care of the um, cost element, you are updating it as you are going, it, it gives you that projection where you can uh, estimate whether you are going to have cost of balance or not also. Any other question in the, is there any other question, please? Does Microsoft Project Software help with cost control and produce reports on this? It can do that. It can do that. If you have entered the cost elements, what does it mean? What you need to do uh, on that resource, you need, for instance, now let's say develop project shatter. How much is going to cost you? Um, identify um, stakeholders. How much is going to cost you? There is a sheet that we were supposed to go to. That is the resource sheet. This is where um, you have your, you can have your project, your costs, personnel, project uh, manager. Uh, you can have your site manager. You can have your your equipment. So in our next um in our next um in our next um next module, we we will look at how to populate um, this so that we'll be able to take care of the cost. How much is the cost for you know the project manager? Eh? How much is he going to be taking per day? Do you want him to take something per day? Or is it going to be per, 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 per hour? So we we'll do that. I'm going to send us a video uh, that really deals with uh, this um, project um, cost, this uh, cost side of uh, cost management in, uh, in in projects. So we this this um, we are able to take care of this if you want to delve into this um, aspect. So it's able to take care of it and you want to produce reports when you just work. If you have entered what you are supposed to enter, normally your um, your percentage completion is updated. When you have this one sorted out, you will just come to report. It will give you report on costs. All right. So we have report on costs. Okay. So you have your cash flow, cost of balance. You can see 
hand value report I was talking about, the source cost overview and all those stuff. So these are the five reports we have on costs. We are able to get those uh, reports also. Any other question? So later in the day, um, the video, the YouTube video for this training will be available on um, on our classroom. Then later in the day also, our assignment one will be there. If you have not uh, installed Microsoft Project on your system, you can shut me up. Um, let's um, talk later. So in the absence of um, any other question, um, we are going to call it a day. All right, let's um, call it a day um, so that we can go and do some other things.